This is a shiny Pokemon. They sparkle when you encounter them and are very rare because, well, they are a different color than other Pokemon and only show up once in a while. Today, I'll be hunting three of the hardest shiny Pokemon to get in Generation 9. They kind of have multiple forms, so it might be more than three Pokemon. More like seven. Let's head over to Lake Casaroya for our first hunt. This is Tatsugiri, and it actually has three forms, orange, yellow, and pink. And you won't believe this, but each of its forms also have their own shinies. So if you want to catch a shiny Tatsugiri, you're going to need all three of them. And if you want to collect the whole group, you need six. The pink one shiny is white, the orange shiny is orange with a little bit of brown on top, and the yellow shiny is, wait for it, orange with some stripes on it. The problem with shiny hunting is that these Tatsugiris are so small that the only shiny you can possibly see is the white one from a distance. Now for clarity in this video, the chances of getting a shiny Pokemon are 1 out of 4096. I have a shiny charm which increases my shiny odds to 1 out of 2048. I made myself a sparkling sandwich using an avocado and salty Herba Mystica which will increase my shiny chances even more of getting a dragon type Pokemon to show up, which Tatsugiri is. A sparkling sandwich by itself gives you a 1 out of 1024 chance, but combined with the shiny charm that puts it at a 1 out of 683 chance. So I began my hunt. I had to make sure to start paying attention to every single orange Tatsugiri I found while looking for a white one. The Tatsugiris were roaming around everywhere. They were swimming around in the lake, sunbathing on the little islands, and running around on the larger patches of grass. Now obviously it's really hard to distinguish all the orange Tatsugiri from one another, so we will be introducing the zoom in strategy. This will allow you to zoom in on the Pokemon so you can see the shiny better. To do this you have to open up your settings on your Switch, go into system, scroll down to zoom, and turn it on. Then when you double tap the home button it shows up and you can use X to zoom in and Y to zoom out. Double tapping home will exit you out of this menu. This is really useful for the specific hunt since there are two orange shiny Tatsugiris I had to be on the lookout for. Every single time I saw an orange color in the water, I zoomed in. When I saw the orange on the grass, I zoomed in. It was driving me insane, but this was the only way to be sure. While I was in the water, I noticed a shiny, but it wasn't what I was looking for. It was Dratini. Oh my gosh, is that... Is that actually a Dratini? I wasn't even looking for this. I caught in a heel ball to match it. Is it me or do other shiny Pokemon you are not looking for always show up in the hunt? Comment down below and let me know. I continued my search in the water and then I saw something white. I immediately swam towards it and was able to find my first Tatsugiri. I checked it to see if I had any Premier Balls on me, but I didn't. So I did the most controversial thing and threw a quick ball at it and got it. First try. With one Tatsugiri down, I only had two more to go. However, I did not want to encounter the white one first because now I'm going to be even more paranoid about every little orange dot I see. I began my search again and bumped into another shiny. This time it was Dragonair. Pretty cool to find a second evolution shiny. I now need a Dragonite to complete this collection. Now, if you're wondering, the reason why all these other shiny dragon Pokemon are showing up is because the sandwich I ate increases all dragon spawns in the area. So while hunting for Tatsugiri, we could bump into more Dratini Dragonair possibly a shiny from the Altaria family when they spawn, or a Gumi or Sligu. And look, I'm definitely not complaining about these bonus shinies we're going to be getting. Time was passing by as I continued to hunt for shinies. Now the time reached midnight, which in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, for those that don't know, changed the mass outbreaks for certain Pokemon. Now if you eat a specific sandwich that boosts a specific type of Pokemon, and are in that area where those Pokemon spawn, you have a high chance of getting a mass outbreak for that exact Pokemon you want. Now, while I was shiny hunting, I noticed I was bumping into an insane amount of orange Tatsugiri. When I looked at my minimap, it was confirmed right there. The shiny chances of a shiny charm, sparkling power, and an outbreak combined put you at a one out of 585 chance of getting a shiny if you knock out 30. So that's what I started to exactly do, start knocking them out. If you knock out 60 or more, that chance goes up to a one out of 512 chance. So after having the highest chances possible in this game, I was finally able to spot the odd looking Tatsugiri with a little brown on its back. That would secure our second shiny, Tatsugiri. 
and this leaves us finding the yellow shiny Tatsugiri, which is also orange, like I mentioned before, with the stripes on his back. This one was going to be a lot harder. I continued searching for hours and hours. I then bumped into another shiny Dratini, and then a shiny Gumi. Nice, a Gumi in my collection. So not bad, but not what we're looking for. This hunt continued for so long that new Paradox Pokemon were released. Walking Wake and Iron Leaves. I booted up a live stream real quick on YouTube to quickly catch both of these Pokemon and return back to my hunt. Because Walking Wake is also a Dragon type, I thought I would use it as a good luck charm to summon the last Shiny Tatsugiri. The reason why Walking Wake is also really cool and a good Pokemon to use during this hunt is because when you auto battle, it can run on the water and it can run everywhere, basically just jumping from grass to water. How cool is that? Just as cool as if you hit that subscribe button so we can get to 1 million subscribers. And because you hit that subscribe button, I finally noticed an orange Tatsugiri that looked a little different from all the other ones I was hunting. It had stripes. I ran into it as fast as I could, threw a quick ball at it, and with that, I successfully collected all three shiny Tatsugiris. Shout out to Walking Wake. But our celebration is far from over because now we must head over to a much more difficult hunt. Welcome to the Pokemon League area. Kinda sucks that there isn't really a victory road or anything intense to get here, but we are here for Tandem Mouse and this is my favorite location to hunt it. I consider this to be one of the hardest hunts of the game because you can barely even tell the difference between a shiny and a non-shiny. So we are gonna be relying a lot on the auto battling technique for the shiny hunt. In Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, you can never knock out a shiny Pokemon. When you try to do it, your Pokemon will hesitate and refuse to attack it. So you never have to worry about knocking out a shiny. And that is exactly what we're going to do with this hunt. I popped a sparkling normal sandwich, which is just using tofu and salty herba to enhance the chance of getting a normal shiny Pokemon. So I began my my hunt. For this hunt, we are going to be using Iron Leaves since it's really fast and I just wanted to show off another new Paradox Pokemon. I kept auto battling over and over again until my Iron Leaves didn't want to attack a Tandem Mouse. That's when I realized I finally got a Shiny. Woo! Yes! And this was pretty quick, so I caught my Tandem Mouse, but let me introduce you to the next problem. Tandem Mouse, when it evolves into a mouse hold, has two forms, a family of three and a family of four. Can you guess which one is the rare one? It's the family of three, and it's very hard to get. Tandem Mouse has a 1 out of 100 chance of evolving into the 3 family mouse hold, while the 4 family mouse hold is super common. When the Tandem Mouse reaches level 25 or above, when it's not the first slot in your party, it'll just show up as a mouse hold in the party after you're done with your fight. But when it's the first Pokemon in your party and you level up in a fight, you will get an evolution screen. So let's test our luck with my first shiny because it's so low leveled, I decided to battle wild chances and then it finally randomly involved into my party into a family of four. Not what I was looking for. While I was upset about it, just look how cute they are. Two parent mice and their little babies. I can't really hate this thing. Back to the hunt. So I went back to the Pokemon League and caught a bunch, which actually took a very, very long time. After catching a bunch of them, it was now time to level them all up. I took a very powerful Pokemon to lead my party and started beating down on Chanseys. This is a great way to evolve five at a time and skip the evolution screen. The anticipation for one at a time was just too much for me and I couldn't handle that. I caught 15 shiny tandem mouse in total, so it was now time to evolve them in batches. The first five were all four family mouse holds. The next five were also four family mouse holds. I was getting really nervous because the next five were my last ones. And if I didn't get it in the last five, I would have to catch more shiny tandem mouse. And trust me, it's a very tedious process. Finally, in this batch, I was able to get a three family mouse hold, bringing the mouse hold hunt to an end and getting the one out of a hundred shiny mouse hold. I never want to see that mouse ever again after this hunt, but we have one more hunt to do.
Zero, a fitting end location for our final hunt, and the Pokemon I'm hunting is Dunsparce, but mostly its rare three segmented evolution form, the Dunsparce. Unfortunately, the odds are against us as there is only a 1 out of 100 chance of evolving a Dunsparce into a three segmented form, the Dunsparce. Pair that with the shiny odds and that 1 out of 100 chance, and that's going to make this a lot harder. Once the Dunsparce learns to move Hyper Drill and gains one level, it can either evolve into a two segmented form or a three segmented form. The two segmented forms can be found in the wild, but unfortunately, the three segmented form cannot be found anywhere in the game, not even in raid dens. So it's time to get into this challenge. Now, hunting a shiny Dunsparce is actually simple. Before entering Area Zero, eat a normal sparkling sandwich. Tofu and Salty Herba will do the trick. Now at Research Lab Station 4, also known as the bottom part of Area Zero with all the nice crystals, the only Pokemon that spawns here when you eat a normal sandwich is Dunsparce, and sometimes the two segmented the Dunsparce runs around or squirms around. So there are actually two ways to hunting down all these Dunsparce or going for a shiny one. One is starting off from this research station lab four, and the general thing to do is start moving in this pathway towards the right. Now, once you start doing this, you're gonna climb up this little hill here. Make sure to slow down because these are single spawns and it takes a bit, but this is initially the pathway you'll be going. Bada bing, bada boom, look at the crystals. There you go, there's your two segmented form dun dun sparse that shows up. They won't always be there, but they do show up, just not the triple form. And then you come around to this platform over here. And as you're around this platform, you're gonna make a jump at this edge over here. So you're gonna see right at this edge. Make sure to turn around, spot any Dunsparce that could be behind you. Could be a shiny, could not be. And then you're gonna jump all the way down here onto this little pathway, right when you face your research station. And then you're gonna go up right back to the lab following this pathway. And this is pretty much what people do to move around to get a bunch of different spawns in the area. Now, the second method for this hunt is basically right from the research station lab is to come over here, see this waterfall, and you're gonna just jump. That's it, just jump. And you see those crystals right below you? We're gonna head down towards them ASAP. And once you get to that crystal, right in front of you is going to be this rock. And when you approach the rock, you can see all these Dunsparce starting to show up. And as soon as you back away from it, they all start to despawn. And when you go back, hey, look at that. They, they show up again. Pretty cool. I did this a few times and just like that, right before my eyes was my very first shiny Dunsparce. I ran quickly towards it, dodging all the other Pokemon there. And then I finally caught it in a quick ball. Luckily in area zero, when you catch a Dunsparce and go into its moves, you can hit relearn. These Dunsparce are high level enough that it'll have Hyper Joe ready to go as soon as you enter that menu. I put it on Dunsparce as well as adding some experience candies that I had and it immediately evolved into a Dun Dunsparce, but it was the second form, indicated by the two parts between the head and the tail, just so you don't get confused and count different parts of the body. I did this over and over again, catching one shiny Dunsparce after another shiny Dunsparce with the hope of it evolving into the three segmented shiny the Dunsparce, but it did not. And it kept evolving into the two segmented the Dunsparce. Again and again, I caught more and more and they just kept evolving into the two segmented form. Look at my Pokemon box. It's just full of the Dunsparce, the two segmented ones. And if you subscribe to the channel, I'll be giving you one of these Dun Dunsparce and maybe it might help us get a third one in this video. After catching a couple more shiny Dunsparce, it finally happened. Wait, no ways. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's a three segmented form. I was finally able to get my shiny three segmented the Dunsparce. And just like that, I caught all three of the hardest Gen 9 Pokemon in the game.